All right, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Episode 70. For anybody new, this is a podcast, so the only thing on the screen is going to be a shifting visual backdrop. As always, if anybody wants to support the channel and the podcast or just help me be able to exist, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and at the top pinned comment. So, U.S. coal consumption, almost all of which obviously is for power generation. A few single-digit percentage points are for uh, for metallurgy, for steelmaking, uh, as a supply of pure carbon. But just like with uh, civilization as a whole, obviously the overwhelming majority of coal consumption in the U.S. is for power generation. And so U.S. coal consumption has been falling consistently, and over the past not even 10 years, just the, uh, the last six years, U.S. coal consumption has fallen by more than half now. Total yearly consumption numbers for the U.S. Uh, for coal used to be about uh, a billion tons per year, and over the last uh, decade or so, or really the last six years, like we said, it's dropped all the way down to only around 500 million. Now, obviously, we don't have the total yearly data for this year, so we'll just run down the first and second quarter data for uh, the past six years plus this year. So to start with U.S. coal consumption in the first quarter or the first three months of 2014 was 248 million tons. First quarter of 2015, 213 million tons. 2016, 166 million. 2017, 174 million. 2018, 168 million. 2019, 158 million. And this year, 2020, in the first quarter, only 109 million, and we'll get to that sudden drop in a second. And in the second quarter, or the second three months of 2014, U.S. coal consumption was 211 million tons, 2015, 189 million, 2016, 160, 2017, 167, 2018, 157, 2019, 130, and this year, 2020, in the second quarter, U.S. coal consumption was only 96 million tons. So the decline over time overall has been from uh, the retiring and shutting down of coal-fired power plants as they are consistently being replaced by natural gas-fired power plants in the wake of the utter explosion of U.S. shale gas production over the last 15 years or so. Granted, that's rounded its top now and is uh, on its way terminally downward, so that, uh, that massive power grid switchover was kind of a ill-advised heat-of-the-moment decision, and that's actually uh, really likely going to end up backfiring on the U.S., but uh, we'll have to watch and see that all play out. But because of the sheer temporary abundance over the last uh, 10 or 15 years that the upsurge of U.S. shale gas production provided, in terms of natural gas supply, that made natural gas extremely cheap and attractive. So that's what all the power companies uh, started jumping over to. As they started reaching points uh, where a growing number of their power plants were starting to uh, be pretty aged, and so they would need to be retired and replaced with new ones anyways. So they made a price-driven decision over the course of time as natural gas prices were kept pretty low by the uh, newfound supply provided by all the shale gas production which has now rounded off its peak. Now, as for the uh, steeper than previous year's drop that uh, we experienced in the first two quarters of this year, that was driven by, you can take a guess, uh, what we've been just referring to as the 2020 situation, or rather there's multiple 2020 situations, so the medical 2020 situation, and the economic shutdowns that that resulted in that uh, drastically decreased uh, electricity demand levels, so apart from the ongoing trend of coal-fired power plants retiring and being replaced with natural gas-fired power plants, we also, in the uh, first half of this year, had, you know, the uh, profound impact of the 2020 medical situation causing, you know, so much stuff to uh, be shut down and less people uh, to be going places. So, you know, a lot less stuff was open and, you know, tons of buildings and businesses and everything that normally would have had, you know, all the stuff inside them on. Obviously, you had all the stuff inside them off instead, so much less power consumption, so thus less power generation being carried out, which thus obviously showed up in the steeper than usual drop from the uh, previous year's level of coal consumption. So that's the reasoning for that in particular. 
although the overall trend would still be going on. However, uh, granted, it would be slowing down by now, as most of the coal-fired power plants that were in the uh, retirement age range have been retired by this point. Not all of them, but a huge number of them. Now moving on to the uh, regular weekly U.S. oil and gas numbers. For the previous week, U.S. oil production remained at 10.7 million barrels per day, and it may start recovering in a little bit, as we've had two weeks now where the U.S. rig count actually went up, but we'll obviously have to see if that pattern actually continues or not. U.S. oil consumption for the previous week dropped from the week before and averaged a bit under 17.5 million barrels per day. Normally in present day, under non-2020 circumstances at least, U.S. oil consumption would be between 20 and 22 million barrels a day. The individual numbers within that being U.S. gasoline consumption coming in at 8.53 million barrels per day, whereas normally it would be between 9 and 10. And since the initial big impact of everything that's been happening, it has gotten back up over 9 once several weeks ago. U.S. diesel fuel demand uh, dropped a little bit, down to 3.65 million barrels per day. Usually U.S. diesel fuel demand uh, in present day typically hovers around 4 million barrels a day. U.S. jet fuel demand dropped a bit, down to 858,000 barrels per day. Usually in present day under non-2020 circumstances, U.S. jet fuel demand is anywhere between 1.6 and 2 million. And U.S. propane consumption dropped back down to 615,000 barrels per day equivalent. It was up past and around a million barrels per day equivalent uh, for the last couple weeks. As a lot of people, businesses, and buildings uh, that uh, use propane heating were uh, probably doing a pre-winter or pre-cold months fill up. U.S. crude oil inventories are still dropping. Granted by smaller amounts now, uh, being drawn down by another 2 million barrels over the course of the previous week. Global jet fuel consumption, U.S. jet fuel consumption included in that, after recovering back up to around 5 million barrels a day and staying there for the past two months or so, it took a sudden drop by a few hundred thousand, dropping back down now to 4.6 million barrels per day. Normally in present day under non-2020 circumstances, it would uh, be typically between 6 and 8. And oil prices, after having dropped uh, back under $40 per barrel, recovering back over $40 per barrel again, now have dropped back under $40 per barrel again, and uh, we're fluctuating around between 36 and 38. Over in the natural gas numbers, U.S. natural gas production uh, recovered a little bit from the prior week, back up to 98.7 billion cubic feet per day. Granted, obviously below its uh, second and likely final peak of around 109 billion cubic feet per day that it hit uh, back in December or January. U.S. natural gas consumption averaged 79.3, with some of the individual numbers composing that being heating demand dropped back down into the single digits at 8.9 billion cubic feet per day. And given the colder temperatures that have moved into the lower 48 states uh, over the last few days, as the natural gas week is measured from Thursday to Thursday, the data for this current time period that will be released this coming Thursday U.S. heating demand will almost certainly uh, jump back up into the double digits, and probably, I'd guess, 14, 16, maybe. I'd definitely be surprised if it doesn't go up over 14, though. Consumption by natural gas-fired power plants uh, popped back up over 30, up to 30.4 billion cubic feet per day. U.S. natural gas exports heading off on LNG tankers, uh, staying in their recovered numbers, coming in this week at an average of 6.5 billion cubic feet per day heading off on LNG tankers. Consumption by the natural gas pipelines for its own pumping system fuel to move all the natural gas around, coming in at 6.5 also. Industrial demand, so natural gas being used uh, to make some chemicals and mostly plastics, as well as a huge chunk of it being used in the uh, nitrogen fixation process to extract nitrogen from the atmosphere. That stayed in the same range as usual, with industrial demand coming in at 21.2. U.S. natural gas storage inventories are up to 3.76 trillion cubic feet in storage. In comparison to normally at this time of year, they would still be down at 3.35. And last year, which had been a high demand winter year, they were still down at 3.28. 
and natural gas prices, after having suddenly dropped back down to around $2, have recovered and are currently hovering around in the range between $2.40 and $2.50 per thousand cubic feet. And to close everything off, Norway released their monthly oil production update. They agreed uh, to be part of the OPEC Plus agreement, and they had cut their production down to 1.86 million barrels per day. And then the previous month, they had uh, brought themselves back up to 2.06. So I thought they were done uh, playing along, but perhaps not. Or this might just be a major maintenance shutdown. But either way, their production suddenly dropped down to 1.72 million barrels per day. All right, that's about it for this one. So thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Support if you want through PayPal or Patreon. They're both down there. May God protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.